Welcome design students. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a reference sheet or an art sheet like this one using Adobe Illustrator. Although this is for a specific project which is a medieval fantasy cottage, uh, anytime in this course that I ask you to create a reference sheet or an art sheet or a call sheet or an inspiration board this is what I'm talking about. So this can be for any project that we do in this class. And I'm not going to show you how to specifically create a specific art sheet or reference sheet. I'm just going to show you uh, some techniques in Illustrator that you can use to create something like this. So let's get started. Obviously, the first thing you need to do is start up Adobe Illustrator. And when you do, you need to select New File. And this allows you to choose some preset dimensions for your project, or you can create custom dimensions. The default unit is usually points. So let's change that to inches. And the default is 8.5 by 11. Let's change that to 11 by 17. And incidentally, I'm using Tab to advance to the next item. You can also use Shift Tab to go backwards and Tab to go forwards. Once you've entered those dimensions, make sure it says inches. Go ahead and click Create. and you will probably see something that looks like this. Now, this is the default workspace for Adobe Illustrator. This area in the center is called your artboard. There's the main menu up at the top and a toolbar over here. And there's some tabs over here which give you various information. Uh, I like to use the a different workspace than this, and so that's what I'm going to be doing for this tutorial. So if you want yours to look like mine, and uh, advise that. You need to come over here to the Workspaces button and select Essentials Classic. And this will give you a set of default tools here. It will also give you this contextual menu here up at the top. And it will give you some shortcuts to various uh, windows and tabs over here that are also, some of them are here as well. So I think the first thing we should do is probably go to the Layers menu, and that's this button right here. And let's take this first layer and double click it and rename it background. And then let's click the plus sign here and create a new layer. And let's name this one images. And then let's create a third layer and name it text. Now we're going to sort these layers differently. You can click and drag on a layer and move them up and down in order. And you can also toggle their visibility. And you can click right here to lock them and unlock them. So to create a background, we're just simply going to create a shape. Come over here to the uh, Shapes menu. It's right here. And select Rectangle. You can click and hold on this button with your left mouse button and see different shapes. We're going to create a rectangle. And we're just going to click and drag and create a rectangle that covers the whole artboard. Currently, this rectangle is white. Its color is here. This is its fill color. If you click here, you might see some swatches here. Um, this is its stroke color or its outline color. And this is also its fill color here and its stroke color here. So. We can change that color by double clicking on the swatch here and using the color picker. Or we can click here and select the swatch. But I think I want to use a gradient background. So the gradient tool is right here. So all you got to do is turn it on and click on the shape to which you want to add a gradient. Now my gradient is going horizontally. I want my gradient to go vertically. So there is a gradient window over here on the right hand side of your screen and it is right here. You can click it and access that. You can change the type of gradient. You can change it to radial, linear, or freeform. I'm going to stick with linear and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and that makes it top to bottom. And then I'm going to double click on these two little things here to change the colors. Now you can move these around, these little flags, to change how the gradient looks. You can move the midpoint around as well. And you can double click on these little flags to change the color. I'm going to use my swatches here 
and I'm going to change the top color to a very dark blue and then I'm going to click this one double click this one and change it to a darker blue maybe I'll make this one a little lighter so what colors you choose are up to you what type of gradient you choose is up to you that's all part of the creative process just make sure that your gradient colors do not detract from your images or your text so the next thing we're going to do is create a title so I'm going to come over to my layers manager and I want you to notice that I had the images layer selected so because of that if I open this layer up you can see that's where my rectangle was created I really wanted it in the background layer so I'm gonna click and drag it and drop it into the background layer and then I'm going to lock that layer by clicking right here now I'm going to put some text in here so I'm going to select the text layer next so that anything I create is going to be in that layer now there's lots of things we can do with text but let's just do some very basic things to create text you click the text tool which is right here in your toolbar and I'm going to create what's called a title here so I'm going to click once with the text tool just click and that creates some text and I'm going to name this art sheet or reference sheet or whatever the project is or whatever and then I'm going to make it bigger and you can do that by simply clicking the little um, control points on the rectangle that surrounds it you can create it you can make it upside down you can make it backwards you can make it very tall you can make it very long if you want to scale it uniformly then you hold down shift if you want to scale it from the center of where it is, then you hold down Alt. And we can change the color of the text right here in the contextual menu when I have it selected. Here is its color. And I can also give it a stroke if I want to. And I can change the thickness of the stroke as well. And I can change the font right here I'm not going to have a stroke so I'm going to go ahead and click this and click the slash swatch just wanted to demonstrate to you how you do that now I think this needs to be a little smaller so I'm going to hold down shift and alt so I can scale it from the center and then I'm going to move it down a little bit. I want to make sure it's centered. And with it selected, if I come up here to the contextual menu, you can see these alignment buttons here. That centers it vertically, and that centers it horizontally. I don't want to do that. But I do want to center it vertically. So the next thing I want to do is create some paragraph text. So I'm going to click the text tool again. And instead of just clicking this time, I'm going to click and drag, and that creates a text box. And you can see a paragraph of text appears here. I'm going to type in my school name, my class name, and then I'm going to click the Select tool and change the color. And then I'm going to make this text a little bigger by selecting the text box and changing the size of the text right here. Now if your text uh, disappears like that, then that means your text box is not long enough. Now I want to put some other stuff over here, my name and the date. So I'm going to just copy this over here. So I'm going to hold down Alt while I drag this box over to the other side. And you can see that these little snap lines here help me line it up with the text that's on the other side of the page. Then I'm going to double click on this text box and edit this text. Now I think I'm going to make this a little shorter and just move it a little further over here to the margin. 
So the next step is to put images in here and we need to make sure that we are in the images layer. So I'm going to come to my layer uh, window here and select the images layer and then close that. And you should have already collected and saved a bunch of reference images in a folder. And here's my folder. It's called reference. And in here I've saved all of the images that I plan on using. I also have already, already gone and created a sketch of my proposed um, house based on these images. So I'm going to just go ahead and drag that in. All I got to do is click and drag. Then I'm going to minimize this window. And I need to scale this down. So remember to scale uniformly, we hold down Shift. So I think this should probably be in the center, roughly, and I'm going to use my align tools to align it into the center. And then I'm going to open that folder again, and I'm going to select um, my textures, and I'm just holding down control as I'm clicking on these. And then I'm going to click and drag all of them into this Illustrator document at the same time and minimize this window. Now they're all on top of each other so I'm going to click away to deselect them and then I'm going to separate them all and then we're going to make them all the same size as soon as we get them separated. So to make them all the same size we simply uh, click one of them, go to the Properties tab, which is right here, and here is its width and height. Right now this is 4 by 4 inches. I think it needs to be a lot smaller. So I'm going to try 2 by 2, and we're just going to keep doing that. I think 2 inches by 2 inches is a good size. And remember, you can tab to the next item. So I'm just going to go through and do that to each one of these. And I'm not going to make you watch me do that to all of them. Now that I have them all the same size, I'm going to just sort of line them up here a little bit. They don't have to be perfectly aligned. You'll see why in just a minute. Now to space these out evenly, I'm going to hold down Shift and click every one on a row. I'm going to use the Align tools to align to the top, and that evens them out, aligns them on the top edge. Then I'm going to use the Distribution tools here, and I'm going to space them out evenly, uh, horizontally, like so. And it looks like they're already spaced out evenly. Then I'm going to do the same thing to these, align on the top edge, and distribute evenly, horizontally. And you can see that one did space them. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these, move them down, and then I'm going to hold down Shift and scale them uniformly so that they're on the bottom of the page, sort of like this. Now to put a little title down here for the textures, I can select my art sheet title and hold down Alt and then drag a copy down here. And I can change this to textures. Now if I want it to be rotated, I can rotate it exactly 90 degrees by coming up to the Object Transform Rotate menu here. And then I can rotate it 90 degrees and hit Tab. And click OK and then move it into place. Now to put the rest of these in here, you just need to open up your your um, folder and then click some of them, bring them in, minimize the folder, and then resize them uniformly and put them where you want. To put one on top of another, like let's say I wanted this one to be on top, all I would need to do is right click on it, select Arrange, and bring it to the front. You 
You don't have to use all of your images, but um, you know you need to have at least I think ten was the requirement. Once you're done creating your art sheet, then to export it, you go to File, Export, Export as, and then you make it a PNG or a JPEG. Name it. I would just put it on my desktop and click export and then just click OK. And then you'll have an art sheet image to import to Canvas and turn in for this assignment. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.